Hi, students. How are you today? Welcome to Top Tutors, Topos e-learning classes. Understand every single concept and be a top. Today's objective: properties of charges. That is characteristics of charges. The difference between charge and mass. These are the topic mainly we are going to discuss in today's session. Also, we will answer the questions. Problem regarding transfer of charges and masses on rubbing two bodies. We are rubbing two bodies. How much charge will be transferred? Uh, how much mass will be transferred? How much positive and negative charge is there in a cup of water? How much time is required to get a total charge of one coulomb if electrons are transferring at a rate of 10 raised to 9 uh, per second? Find number of positive and negative charges in one paise coin. Find the number of electrons present in one cubic centimeter of copper. So a lot of interesting questions we can answer in today's session. You have a motivational quote today. The one exclusive sign of thorough knowledge is the power of teaching by Aristotle. So let us start. Properties or characteristics of charges. What are the main, main properties? First, charges are of two types. Second, charges are attractive or repulsive. Third, charge is transferable. Fourth, charge is a scalar quantity. Fifth, charge is additive in nature. Sixth, charge is condensed. Seventh, charge is conserved. Eight, charge is relativistically invariant. Nine, charge in accelerated motion emits electromagnetic radiation. We can discuss one by one. First one, charge are of two types. Electric charge is an intrinsic property of matter carried by some fundamental particles like mass. It is an intrinsic property of matter. Right? Similarly, charge is also an intrinsic property, basic property. There are only two types of charges. They are positive charge and negative charge. Charge can take a positive or negative value. The magnitude of the charge carried by a single electron or proton is usually considered to be the basic natural unit of charge and is given by the symbol E small e, elementary charge. Electrons have an electric charge of negative 1.6021766634 into 10 raised to 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs. So let us remember one digit, negative 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs for the uh, solving problems. We can denote it by negative e. Protons have an electric charge of positive 1.6021766634 into 10 raised to negative 19 coulomb. So their magnitudes are same. Only the sign is different. For electron, it is negative, and proton, it is positive. So proton, we can denote it by positive E, and electron, negative E. Small q is used for the charge of a single particle, while capital Q is used for the overall charge of a large object as a convention. If the size of charge in the bodies are very small as compared to the distance between them, we treat them as a point charge. Second property, charges are attractive and repulsive. So charges are attractive and also repulsive. Like charges ripple, positive and positive, ripple, negative and negative, ripple. Unlike charges attract each other, positive and negative, they will attract, come closer. Third, charge is transferable. Charge can be transferred from one body to another body. Charging means transfer of charge from one body to another. Positively charged body means loss of electrons, that is deficiency of electrons. A negatively charged body means gain of electrons, that is excess of electrons. So positive charge means it is not the transfer of protons. Right? Protons are in the 
a nucleus, it is in the central core of a atom. So normally protons cannot transfer from one atom to another or from one molecule to another. So only the electrons are transferring from one body to another body. So if the electrons are gaining, it is negatively charged. It means that body has an excess of electron, right? And if there is a deficiency of electron, then we can say it is a positively charged body. When charge is transferred, then mass also changes. What is the reason? Because actually, charge is transferred means charge is transferred means what? Electrons are moving from one body to another body. Even though it is negligible, electron has mass, right? Electron has a mass. So when charge is transferred, then mass also changes, even though it is negligible. So mass of negatively charged body is greater than mass of a positively charged identical body. What is the reason? Negatively charged means gain of electron. So by gaining electron, the mass is increased. So positively charged means it is a loss of electron. If electron is lost, there is a loss of mass is also there. Mass of an electron is 9.109 into 10 to the power negative 31 kilogram. Just remember 9.1 into 10 raised to negative 31 kilogram for the problem solving. That is equal to that is equal to 5.489 into 10 to the power negative 4 atomic mass unit AME. In chemistry, we have a unit AME. What is it? It is 1 by 12th of the 1 by 12th of the carbon to isotope. Right? So actually it is equal to the mass of one proton or neutron. Both are equal. So if you divide mass of electron that is 9.109 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram by by AMU 1.672621 into 10 raised to minus 27. Minus 27, we will get that this value. 1 5.489 into 10 to the power negative 4. Mass of a proton or neutron is equal to 1.672619 into 10 to the power negative 27 kilogram. That is one AM. If you divide mass of a proton by mass of electron, it is equal to 10 to the power 4. It means Mass of a proton is equal to 10,000 times the mass of an electron. So normally, mass of the electron will consider as a negligible mass. So when we are saying the mass of the atom, we will say the mass of protons and neutrons. Mass of electron we will neglect. Fourth property, charge is a scalar quantity. Charge is a scalar quantity. What by scalar quantity? Scalar quantity means what? It has only magnitude, no direction. Magnitude of one electron or proton is equal to charge of 1.6021766634 into 10 raised to negative 19 coulombs. Electron is negative, proton is positive. What is the SI unit of charge? It is coulomb denoted by capital C. So one coulomb is equal to 6.24150907440 into 10 raised to 18 elementary charges. It means if you take one coulomb charge and that one coulomb charge, if you divide by charge of one electron, that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19, you will get the value 6.24 into 10 raised to 18. So one coulomb is equivalent to charge on 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons okay, or protons. Some smaller units of charges is one uh, micro coulomb. Micro coulomb means what? 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. Similarly, milli coulomb, milli coulomb denoted by small m in capital C, that is equivalent to equal to 10 to the power minus 3 coulomb. Now, fifth property charge is additive in nature. What is by additive in nature? If a system contains two point charges, Q1 and Q2, the total charge of the system is obtained 
simply by adding algebraically Q1 and Q2. So normal mathematical algebraical addition we can do in the case of uh, that is charge add up like a real numbers or they are scalars like the mass of a body, not a vector quantity, no, no direction. So no need to add in the form of vectors. That is algebraical method. If a system contains n charges q1, q2, q3, etc, 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 qn, then the total charge of the system is q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus etc plus qn. Proper signs have to be used while adding the charges in a system. So sign has to be given properly and add it algebraically. For example, the total charge of a system containing pi charges, pi charges are there, that is plus one, plus two, positive two, positive one, negative three, positive four, and negative five in some arbitrary unit. So what is the total charge? Positive one plus positive two plus negative three plus positive four plus negative five that you will get negative one, right? In the same unit, the total charge of the body will be negative. If you take another example, we have a positive two Coulomb charge and positive five Coulomb charge and negative three Coulomb charge. So what is the total charge of that system? It will be positive two plus positive five plus negative three. Positive two plus positive five is positive seven and minus three is positive four. So positive four is the total charge of the next sixth charge is condized. What do you mean by condized? Electric charge is always an integral multiple of E is termed as condization of charge. It means electric charge exists in discrete packets rather than in continuous amount. It can be expressed in integral multiples of fundamental electronic charge that is E. So always it will be a multiple of E. E has to be multiplied by some integer and it can be positive and negative, but it will be integral multiple of E. That is why we are saying it is charge is quantized. What is the charge of E? 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. So it will be multiple of 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. One time, two time, three time like that. It will be integral multiple. What is the reason? Because charge means what? Transfer of electrons, right? So electron, we cannot transfer half electron, right? Quarter electron like that or three and a half electron, no. One electron, two electron, three electron, four electron like that. Right, so each electron carries 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. So charge will be an integral multiple of that one. Gain or loss. If gain it is negative, if loss it is positive. That's all. So simple. So total charge in a body will be 1e, 2e, 3e, 4e, etc. Right? Or generally we can say n e. E can be positive e or negative e. So generally we can say q equal to plus or minus any so this was proved by milligan's oil drop experiment there are some particles called quarks which are generated during disintegration of nucleus its charge is verified as one by third of e or two by third of e etc so it is not an integral multiple of fundamental electronic charge it is one by third is a fractional but we will not consider that as the fundamental. What is the reason? This is not considered as a quantum of charge because they are not stable and not transferable. Fine. Seventh is charge is conserved. Charge is neither created nor destroyed, can only be transferred from one system to another. The algebraic sum of positive and negative charges in an isolated system remains constant can be transferred from one object to another object, but as a system, it will remain constant. Example, when a glass rod is rubbed with silk, negative charge appears on the silk, because silk is gaining electron, and an equal amount of positive charge appear on the glass rod, because glass rod loses electron, but the net charge on the glass silk system remains zero before and after rubbing. For example, glass load loses 
10 electron. So it is 10 positive charge. But gaining this 10 electron still become negative 10, right? So as a total, what is coming? Positive 10 plus negative 10. Charge of charge of glass plus charge of silk that is equal to zero. So charge is conserved. Charge is neither created nor destroyed. Within an isolated system consisting of many charged bodies due to interaction among the bodies, charges may get redistributed, but it is found that the total charge of the isolated system is always conserved. Conservation of charge has been established experimentally. The neutron turns into a proton and electron. The proton and electron that's created have equal and opposite charges and the total charge is zero before and after the creation because positive proton one proton has one positive charge one electron has one negative charge so plus one and negative negative one when you're adding you look at zero charges conserved eight charges relativistically invariant we know that energy and mass vary with motion charge will not vary with respect to motion this is known as relativistically invariant it is not when an electron is moving close to the speed of light its mass varies according to the famous variation equation in special relativity but there is no such equation for the charge of an electron or spin so the charge of an electron remains the same even it is moving close to the speed of light charge is unaffected by motion so we can say charge is relativistically invariant as an object moves faster its mass increases by a factor of one by root of one minus b square by c square right lorentz factor if a body is moving the mass can be treated as m is equal to m0 by root of one minus b square by c square the mass is changing by a factor of one by one by root of one minus b square by c square for m0 is mass of the body at rest m is mass of the body in motion v is the velocity of the body c is the speed of light that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so mass is actually variant but charge has no such variation so we can say charge is relativistically invariant fine charge is charge in accelerated motion emits electromagnetic radiation ninth a charge at rest produces only electric field around it if you are keeping a charge positive or negative if the charge is at rest it has electric field around it if the charge is moving uniformly it produces electric as well as magnetic field around it a charge having accelerated motion charge emits electromagnetic radiation in addition to its electric and magnetic field so at rest it has electric field uniform motion it has magnetic field also but if it is accelerating what will happen it will uh, generate uh, it will emit electromagnetic radiation this electromagnetic radiation I have given animation here light is an electromagnetic radiation now let us discuss difference between charge and mass charge is of two type mass is only of one kind only one type charge can either positive or negative but mass is always positive charge cannot exist without mass but mass can exist without net charge there are two type of forces between charges attraction or repulsion unlike charges attract like charges repulse but there is only one kind of force between masses they will attract only charge cause electrostatic force but mass cause gravitational force the forces of attraction or repulsion between charges known as electrostatic force Force of attraction between two masses, known as gravitational force. Charge is condensed, but condensation of mass is not established. Charge is conserved, but mass alone is not conserved. 
mass can change into energy also right but mass plus energy is conserved charge is invariant but mass is charge as si unit coulomb si unit of mass is kilogram so these are the some uh, difference which comparison between charge and mass so let us start our question and answer session first question for you a polyethylene piece rubbed with wool is found to have a negative charge of 3 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb first question estimate the number of electrons transferred from one object to another object from which object to which second part is there a transfer of mass from wool to polythene so just pause the video try yourself after come back and check the answer let us discuss the answer as the wool is positively charged and polythene is negatively charged we can say that some number of electrons are transferred from wool to polythene because wool is positive loose it is losing electrons and polythene is negatively charged so it gain electron so electron transfer from wool to polythene polythene gained electrons charge on the polythene is equal to negative 3 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb negative 3 into 10 raised to negative 7 coulomb even in the question amount of charge on one electron e equal to negative 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 coulomb we have already learned let number of electron transferred from wool to polythene be n so by using the given equation you can calculate the value of n what is the given equation q equal to n e total charge on polythene will be equal to some number of electrons actually electrons are transferring right so q equal to n e q is the total charge and is the number of electron okay e we have to put the charge of electron when we are doing the calculation we will get n equal to q by e q equal to n e total charge will be some number of electrons so that number how many number of electrons are transferred total charge has to be divided by charge of one electron q by e so that is equal to total charge is already given negative 3 into 10 raised to 10 to the power negative 7 so that has to be divided by charge on one electron that is negative 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 so the answer will be 1.87 into 10 raised to 12. so 1.87 into 10 raised to 12 electrons transferred from uh, wool to polythene therefore the number of electrons transferred from wool to polythene is 1.87 into 10 raised to 12. now b part is there a transfer of mass from wool to polythene what is your answer yes why mass is also transfer electron is transferred from wool to polythene right an electron has a mass even though it is negligible let us denote by me mass of electron 9.1 in newton raised to negative 31 kg so total mass transferred equal to mx equal to me into n but m is the mass of one electron and is the total number of electrons transferred so mass of one electron is what 9.1 into 10 raised to negative 31 multiplied by how many electron transferred we found in the previous section the 1.87 into 10 raised to 12 electrons so when we multiply this one we will get 1.706 into 10 raised to negative 18 kilogram so that much mass has been transferred from wool to polythene so from above result mass transferred is too low 1.706 into 10 to the power negative 18 kilogram so normally transfer electron will be negligible but even though we have to say that we have to agree that there is a transfer of mass is taking place next question how much positive and negative charge is there in a cup of water which is 250 gram so we have a cup of water 250 gram water is h2o made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen right 
So how many positive and negative charge is there? So each atom has nucleus. Around the nucleus, we have electrons. So they have electron, negative charge particles are there. Protons are the positive charge electrons. So you have to find the total positive and negative charge in 250 gram of water. Try, pause it and try, come back and check that. Let us see that. The mass of one cup of, cup of water is 250 gram. That's already given, right? In this 250 gram of water, how many water molecules will be there? That you can find using, using mole concept. We have learned in chemistry, mole concept, right? So what do the mole concept say? One mole of any, any substance contain a Avogadro number of particles. 6.0220 into 10 raised to 10 raised to 23 particles will be there. So in 250 gram of water means how many mole it is you have to find. That mole has to be multiplied by Avogadro number. That will give you the number of number of water molecules. In each water molecule, there are two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom. In hydrogen atom, there is one proton and one electron. In oxygen atom, eight proton and eight electron for, for oxygen. So totally, there are two hydrogen and uh, one oxygen. So total number of a proton will be I mean, eight plus two, 10 proton and 10 electron will be there in one molecule. Right, that has to be multiplied by total number of molecules. Try yourself and come back. So the molecular mass of water is 18 gram. We know the given mass divided by the molar mass will give you the number of moles, right? If you want to find the number of mole, number of mole n equal to given mass by molar mass. Also, given number of particle divided by Avogadro number of particle, right? Or if it is a gas, given volume, given volume in liter divided by molar volume, molar 22.4 liter or 24.4 liter. That will give you the number of moles we have learned in chemistry okay so that concept we can use it here to find the number of particles number of molecules present okay so one mole is equal to avogadro number of particles approximately we can take 6.02 into 10 to 23 molecules of water in 18 gram so we have to see how many moles are there for that what i have to do Number of moles, if you want to get given mass by molar mass. So if you divide 250 gram by 18 gram, this will give you the number of moles. Number of mole. Each mole contain Avogadro number of particle. So 250 divided by 18 moles, that multiplied by Avogadro number, 6.02 into 10 raised to 23 that many molecules will be there. Now, each molecule of water contains two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom. That is 10 electrons and 10 protons. You see, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, plus one oxygen gives you one water molecule H2O. Right? Two hydrogen atom H2O means what? H2O means two hydrogen and one, one oxygen. Right? It is not a balanced chemical equation what I have written. It is actually H2O means what? Two hydrogen and one oxygen. 
So two hydrogen hydrogen symbol is one H one. So its mass number is uh, atomic number is one. Up what we are saying is proton number, atomic number. Down what we are saying is mass number, right? That is the number of protons and number of neutrons. Oxygen atomic number is eight. Number of protons for a neutral atom, number of electrons, the number of proton will be equal, and sixteen mass number, right? Or atomic mass. Number of protons plus number of number of proton plus number of neutrons. Here, this is number of protons only. The total positive and total negative charge has the same magnitude. Each at molecule has same number of protons, same number of electron. Ten proton and ten electron, right? So let us find the final answer. What we will get? It is equal to two fifty by eighteen. Two fifty by eighteen into six point zero two into ten raised to twenty three into ten into one point six into ten raised to negative nineteen coulomb. It means two fifty by eighteen will give you number of mole. Number of mole multiplied by Avogadro number will give you the number of molecules. Number of molecules multiplied by ten will give you the number of protons. That is same as number of electron. That is multiplied by the charge of one electron or proton. That will give you the total charge. That is one point three into ten raised to seven coulomb. So two fifty gram of water contain one point three four into ten raised to seven coulomb of positive charge, and also the same one point three four into ten raised to seven coulomb of negative charge. So therefore, one point three four into ten raised to seven coulomb positive and negative charge is there in two fifty gram of water. Next question: If ten raised to nine electrons move out of a body to another body. Every second, how much time is required to get a total charge of one coulomb on the other body? Ten raised to nine electrons are transferring from one body to another body in each second. So, how much time is required to attain one coulomb of charge on another body? Pause, try, and come back. Let us crack the question. In one second. Ten raised to nine electrons move out of the body. Rate of transfer is ten raised to nine electrons transferring per second. Now, therefore, the charge given out in one second is what? Ten raised to nine electrons multiplied by charge of one electron, one point six into ten raised to minus nineteen. So total charge. Transferring in one second is 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 10 coulomb. 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 10 coulomb of charge is transferring in each second. Now, the time required to accumulate a charge of one coulomb can then be estimated. One coulomb, if you try and divide it by the total charge transferring in one second, that will give you the total time. So total charge is one coulomb. That one coulomb is divided by charge transferring in one second. We already found charge transferring one second is 1.6 into 10 raised to 10 coulomb. That part, if you do it, we will get 1 by 1.6 will give you 0.625 into 10 raised to 10 second. This 10 raised to minus 10 take up become 10 raised to 10 second. So let us make the standard form by taking the decimal to right. So you'll get 6.25 into 10 raised to 8 second. So this is the total time. Total time. 6.25 into 10 raised to 8 second is a uh, big value. So to get a clear idea, this second convert into years. How you can convert into years? 6.25 into 10 raised to 9 second divided by 60 into 60 into 24 into 365. Will give you the years. How many years it is? To simplify this, to do like this. See, six point two five 
into 10 raised to 9 second convert the second into minute to do that what you have to do multiply by a minute let it become up and second down so one minute equal to 60 seconds so second and second cancelled we end up with minute now this minute i am going to change into hour so i'm multiplying by minute has to come down because i want to cancel this minute and hour is up so one hour equal to 60 minute minute get cancelled minute get cancelled i end up with hour this hour i want to change into change into uh days how many days right so for that what you have to do multiply it with hour has to come down right and days has to come up right day so one day one day equal to how many hour one day equal to 24 hour so this hour and hour get cancelled i end up with days this day i'm going to change into years so for that i'm multiplying it with a ratio where day is down and and year years up right so one year equal to how many days approximately 365 days so one day is day and day get cancelled so we end up with years same thing i have given here see 6.25 into 10 raised to 9 up right up one in the second here then 60 60 24 365 down 16 to 16 to 24 into 365 so this is approximately equal to approximately equal to 200 years that is 198 years exactly 198 years so in each second 10 raised to 9 electron a big number it is right that many number of electrons and raised to 9 means 1 billion electrons right 1 billion electrons are transferring in one second to a body to attain one column of charge how much time is required almost 200 years so you are getting a concept about that 198 years is required to get one column of charge on a body if one billion of electrons are transferring that body in each second got the concept fine so that's to collect a charge of one coulomb from a body from uh, which 10 raised to 9 electrons move out very every second we will need approximately 200 years 200 years so one coulomb is therefore a very large unit for many practical purposes next find the number of electrons present in one cubic centimeter of copper given copper's atomic number is 29 and uh, atomic mass is 63.5 its density is 98960 kilogram per meter cube see one centimeter length one centimeter breadth one centimeter height a cube of copper copper okay how many electrons are there that you have to find interesting question okay pause it start doing yourself then come back let us crack see density of the copper is 8.96 gram per centimeter cube actually density is given in kilogram per meter cube then when we are changing into gram per centimeter it will be equal to 8.96 gram per centimeter cube because they are given cubic centimeter of copper right one centimeter length one centimeter breadth and one centimeter height or if you are using this density then we have to change this uh, into meter cube mostly right so eight nine six zero kilogram per meter cube right so if you want to change kilogram into uh, gram what you have to do multiply by let the kilogram come down and gram up so one kilogram equal to one kilogram equal to thousand gram then so kilogram and kilogram get cancelled we end up with gram right now we need kilogram gram per centimeter cube so meter cube has changed to centimeter cube so down 
that it have centimeter cube and up we have meter cube. So one meter cube equal to how many centimeter cube? One meter is equal to, one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. One meter cube equal to, one meter square equal to 100 into 100, 100 into 100, so two more zero will come, right? Meter cube into centimeter, then two more zero will come, right? Two more zero. So meter into meter into meter, three meters we are changing into three centimeters. So 100 into 100 into 100, right? One million. So this three zero and this three zero get cancelled. So eight nine six zero by thousand. So eight nine six zero by thousand is eight point nine six. So we got eight point nine six gram per centimeter cube. So that is a conversion. Eight point nine six gram per centimeter cube. Right. Now you got the density in one centimeter cube. 8.96 gram of copper is there. As we have done the previous question, 8.96 gram of copper is there. We have to find how many mole it is. If you get the number of mole, you can find the number of copper atoms present in one centimeter cube. Right? If you get the number of atoms, then you can find the number of electrons because in each atom, the number of proton is equal to its atomic number. So atomic number is already given. And we know a neutral atom, number of protons and number of electrons are equal. So number of proton and number of electrons are 29 in one atom, right? We have to find how many atoms are there. To find how many atoms, we have to find how many moles are there. To find how many moles we have to know the given mass in gram, right? Given mass in gram divided by molar mass will give you the number of moles. Number of moles multiplied by Avogadro number will give you the total number of particles, right? Molecules or atom. Here you have atom, right? Okay, let us do. So atomic mass of the copper is 63.5 atomic mass. So that means it is the molar mass, atomic mass and molar mass is same. Mass of 1 cm cube copper is 8.96 gram. That is the density. Density means what? Density rho or uh, D. Density is mass by volume. In unit volume, how much mass? That is density. Here we have taken unit volume as centimeter cube. So 1 centimeter cube has 8.96 gram. So, mass of one centimeter cube of copper is 8.96 gram, right? Fine. So, number of moles of atom present in one centimeter copper, one centimeter cube copper is what? Given mass by molar mass. Given mass is 8.96 gram and molar mass is 63.5. So, 8.96 by 63.5 moles are the moles. This moles multiply by the Avogadro number that will give you the total number of atoms, right? So number of atoms present in one centimeter cube copper is equal to number of moles multiplied by the Avogadro number 6.23 into 10 raised to 23 approximately. When you're calculating this one, you will get 8.79 into 10 to the power 22 atoms are there. In each atom, number of electrons in one copper atom is 29 because number of proton, atomic number is 29, right? So number of proton and electrons are equal in neutral atom. Fine. Okay. So if you multiply this atom by number of electrons, you'll get the answer. So therefore, number of electrons in one centimeter cube copper is equal to 29 times 8.79 into 10 to the power 22. That will give you 2.5 into 10 raised to 24 electrons. 20.5 into 24 electrons. Clear? So we got that answer. We got that answer. So a cubic piece of copper of side one centimeter cube contains about 2.5 into 10 raised to 24 electrons. Just make the concept. 
2.5 into 10 raised to 24 electron. Such a huge amount of, amount of electrons are present in one centimeter cube of uh, copper piece. Clear? Concept, concept is clear? Okay. Now, next question. Explain the meaning of statement electric charge of a body is quantized. Why can one ignore quantization of electric charge when dealing with macroscopic, that is large scale charges? Textbook question. Answer, electric charge of any body is quantized, meaning only integral a number of electrons can be transferred from a body to another. Integral, integer uh, times, integral multiple of electrons. Charge do not get transferred in fractions form. So the total charge possessed by a body is only in integral multiple of electric charge. So it will be a multiple of basic electronic charge, 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 Coulomb. In the second case, macroscopic case, in the case of large scale, the charge which are used over there are comparatively too huge to the magnitude of the electric charge. And for the macroscopic level, the quantization of charge is for is of no use. Therefore, it is ignored and the electric charge is considered to be continuous. In the macroscopic level, when we are talking, this transfer of uh, charges is negligible actually. So when we talk about the large scale charges, quantization uh, of electric charge is ignored. Okay, though we will consider it as a continuous, continuous charge. Clear the answer? Note it. Next. When a glass rod is dubbed with a silk, silk cloth, charges appear on both. A similar phenomenon is observed with many other pairs of bodies. Explain how this observation is consistent with the law of conservation of charge. You know, simple, you have already learned, right? When a glass rod is dubbed with silk, electrons from the glass rod are transferred to the piece of silk cloth. Due to this, glass rod acquires positive charge because it is losing electrons. Whereas silk cloth acquires negative charge, it is gaining electron. Before rubbing, both the glass rod and silk cloth are neutral. And after rubbing, they gain equal and opposite charges. For example, 10 electrons has been transferred. So one gained the electron, other one lose 10 electron. So one is positive 10, other one is negative 10. But net charge on both of them is equal to zero. Positive 10 plus negative 10 is giving you a zero, right? Such similar phenomena is observed with many other pairs of bodies. Thus, in an isolated system of bodies, charge is neither created nor destroyed. It is simply transferred from one body to the other. So it is consistent with law of conservation of charge. Yeah. Next question. Exemplar uh, question. A Paise coin is made up of aluminium magnesium alloy and weighs 0 0.75 gram. It has a square shape and its diagonal measures 17 millimeter. It is electrically neutral and contains equal amount of positive and negative charges. Treating the Paise coin made up of only alloy. We are just considering neglect magnesium. Just consider it is made up of only aluminium. Find the magnitude of equal number of positive and negative charges. What conclusion do you draw from this magnitude? Just same as what we have done in the previous cases. So pause the video, try yourself. Once you got answer, come back. Fine, let us, let us solve it. See, 
atomic number of aluminum is what 13 it has 13 proton since it is neutral it has it has 13 electron volts right we have to find positive and negative charges the mass is given 0.75 gram then the shape is given is square shape the diagonal is given 17 mm right so the shape and diagonal is not required because we are not going to find the area or volume here oh, we need mass is enough if the mass is the mass is the given mass divided by molar mass will give you the number of moles number of moles multiplied by avogadro number will give you the number of particles in this case it is act right that number of atoms multiplied by atomic number that is number of electrons that will give you the number of negative charge and since it is same proton number is also same that the same magnitude with positive charge that many that much positive charge will be there you see right so let us do so molar mass of aluminium capital m equal to 27 gram right 27 gram it means atomic mass in gram is molar mass right aluminium's atomic mass is or mass number is 27 one molar mass of aluminium has avogadro number na atoms that is 6.023 into 10 to 23 atoms are there given mass of aluminium coin is 0.75 so number of moles how we can find given mass by molar mass small m by capital m 0.75 gram by 27 gram that will give you the number of moles this number of moles multiplied by the avogadro number will give you the total number of particles so number of aluminium atoms present in coin is coin is number of moles number of moles multiplied by avogadro number 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 so that much that much atoms are there right so number of proton in one atom is what 13 that is same as number of electron in one atom correct so therefore the four charge of one proton that is equal to charge of one electron that is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb right so this number of mole multiplied by avogadro number multiplied by number of proton multiplied by the charge of one proton or electron will give you the total charge magnitude of equal number of positive and negative charges is there in the coin what is that is equal to 0 0.75 by 27 into 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 into 13 into 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 19 coulomb this is the number of moles multiplied by number of avogadro number will giving you number of atoms number of atoms multiplied by 13 giving you number of protons this many number of protons are there multiplied by the charge of one proton 1.6 into 10 raised to negative 9 that much coulomb is the total charge total positive charge Positive total negative charge also will be the same because number of protons and number of electrons are same. Charge of proton and charge of electron are also same. So that is equal to that is equal to when you are calculating, you will get the answer. This part 1.6733 into 10 raised to 22. Then you are doing this part. Multiply by 13 into 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So finally, we can calculate. The final answer is 3.48 into 10 raised to 4 coulomb. Total number of positive and uh, negative charges, positive charge or negative charge present in one coin of one paisa coin, which is made up of only aluminium, is 34.8 kilo coulomb. 34.8 kilo coulomb. Kilo means thousand. Okay. What is the conclusion? Conclusion: This is an enormous amount of charge. This we see that ordinary neutral matter contains enormous amount of positive and negative charges. It contains that 
uh, enormous protons and neutrons and electrons right since neutron is uh, uh, has no charge neglect it the proton positive charge electron negative charge right so it has got enormous number amount of positive and negative charges clear next question it was a question of cbc board exam in 2011 two insulated copper spheres a and b of identical size same shape size material everything same have charges q a and negative three q a respectively when they are brought in contact with each other and then separated what are the new charges on them Pause it do it fine so let us crack how will you do this one since two spheres are identical made by same material same size same shape when these two spheres are coming in contact what will happen the total charge will be distributed uniformly equally it will be distributed so total charge means we are now charge is additive in nature so add both qa and negative 3 qa add it so two objects coming in contact divided by two equally distributed so that is that right since the two spheres are identical the total charge will be shared equally so total charge on each sphere will be qa plus plus negative 3 qa by 2 so we are adding both the charges and dividing by 2 so QA plus negative 3 QA will become negative 2 QA. QA is a suspect. So 2 and 2 get cancelled. So it will be negative QA. Negative QA will be the total charge on each sphere. Clear? A similar question in the same year 2011 in board exam, there was a question. Two insulated copper sphere A and B of identical size have charges QA and qb respectively a third sphere of the same size but uncharged is both uh, is brought in contact with the first and then in contact with the second and finally removed from both what are the new charges on a and b right that is the question try pause it and try once it finished come back okay Back. Fine. See. Here we have A, sphere A, this is sphere B, identical side. So this has a charge QA, this has a charge QB, right? A third sphere which same size, same material, identical, but uncharged is brought in contact with the first and then in contact with the second and finally removed from both what are the new charge on a and b so since this has charge uh, positive qa this is positive qb okay so when we are bringing this c see that's g c we are bringing in, in contact and bringing it back okay the charge will be equally distributed so QA divided by 2 will be the new charge, right? New charge on QA and this A and C, A and C. So now C has a QA by 2. Now we are bringing and touching on this one. What happened? Again, the charge will be equally distributed. It means QA by 2 plus QB has to be divided by 2. That will be the new charge on charge on c c and d will be equal correct okay let us look since the spheres are identical the charge will be shared equally right the charge on sphere a when c is coming in contact will be equal to qa by 2 
because C is neutral. So the total charge on A will be distributed equally to so QA by 2. Now, C also got QA by 2, right? This now we are bringing this QA by 2 charge of C and bring, bring in contact with B. What will happen? The charge will be added and distributed equally. So we have to divide by 2, add and divide by 2, right? So the charge on sphere B will be equal to QA by 2 charge. This QA by 2 charge, which is on the C now, has to be added with a charge on B. Charge on B, that is QB. So QA by 2 plus QB is the total charge. This total charge divided by 2, equally distributed. So QA by 2 plus uh, QB will give you what? QA by 2 plus QB will give you QA plus 2 QB by 2. QA plus 2 QB by 2. That is not divided by 2. Right? So one fraction divided by the fraction first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the second. So 1 by 2 will come. 1 by 2 into 2 will be 4. So QA plus 2 QB by 4 will be the final answer. That will be the final answer. Okay? Clear? Okay, that is the end of this session. Fine. If you have any doubts, you can contact me by my email or by WhatsApp. Online students can ask the uh, doubts in the online classroom. Okay. So, learn well. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.